But that isn't their path. And if they try to memorize the details of your path, they're pulled off of their path. This is why I have been really careful not to give too much information about my path. People always ask me, tell me how this all began. Tell me more about your dealings with entities. Well, hold on a second. What if that isn't your path? And the details of my path are irrelevant. The understanding is the important thing. The conclusions I reach. And I can share conclusions with you to motivate you. But I can't have you memorize my conclusion. So I have to have a delicate balance of rhetoric with the information. And the information is not volumes of information. It's enough to make my point clear. It's enough to show you that I've learned. But I don't want you to memorize the details of my life. One who really cares for you will be attentive to that. And the idea of indoctrinating somebody with an oath is absolute evil. Why? Because they're declaring they do not want you to be a creative being and extract your own meaning. You will go through steps in which they will spoon feed you meaning. And because it's more meaning than you had before, more knowledge, you're really impressed by it. You think you're actually getting something. You think that you're being empowered. When they know that by keeping you from being able to extract meaning on your own, they've got complete control over you. They've pulled you off of your path. But, if they did that successfully, you would never even have thought of that, now would you? Because you won't extract your own meaning, you see? Nevertheless, somebody with a lot of knowledge, if they're on a broadband connection, and they're speaking to somebody in a 56K connection, it's anything but easy to tell the truth. Like I said before, one in the know can say the truth very easily to another in the know. If one in the know is speaking to an individual that is not in the know, saying the truth is anything but easy. Why? Because of what you know, you know of the enormous gaps that they have. That you cannot just say the truth because they'll understand the words with the limited understanding they have in their concept building by society. But they would need to go through so much. And you know that they don't believe that. Telling them that makes no sense to them. They say, the truth is simple, you should be able to give me a simple answer. And then what happens is the people that have knowledge get very frustrated. The very moment you interrupt them, or cut off what they're saying to you when they have to extend great patience to try to tell you the truth and you cut them off and want to give them your opinion or you tell them that you agree with them or disagree to somebody in the know when they're speaking to somebody that is not in the know when the person that is not in the know says that they agree or disagree both of those things are offensive because they know you should just have your mouth shut and take in what they're saying and a lot of what they're saying will be rhetoric but I talk to people like this all the time they completely ignore the rhetoric I'll use rhetoric that if they had wisdom they would understand at least okay there's something with this and they blow it off they go yeah but anyway and then I blow them off and they have no idea why I blew them off or people will just bombard me with questions. Questions that are what you call loaded. Anybody in the know would say that's a loaded question. Because you lack, you lack so much just in the fact that you're asking those questions shows how much you don't know. And you ask them in a very naive way. It's not your fault, but you expect a simple answer people will go up to somebody with knowledge that has required an entire lifetime of attentive awareness to their experiences detailed and disciplined effort to extract meaning from your life and they ask you a simple question 
and expect somehow that you are going to be able to transfer a lifetime of understanding in two or three paragraphs. They truly do. They do expect that, otherwise they wouldn't ask the question. So you have this huge gap between those who are in the know and those who are not in the know. Those who are not in the know do not know they're not in the know because of how they have been taught to think. They have been incorrectly instructed in their thinking process itself. They have been taught to look outside of themselves for answers. They have been misinformed about what answers are because they've spent their whole life having the meaning spoon-fed to them. They think that's how it works, so you ask a question and somebody can spoon-feed you the answer. And because you lack any meaning or an understanding, you don't understand why that answer is wrong, limited, or even misleading you. You can't based upon that, based upon how you've been instructed to think. So a lot of people that have knowledge, when they interact with the average person, they get very, very frustrated. Very. They'll just look at you. All they can do is look at you because they can't say anything to you. You would not be able to extract meaning from what they say. They said gum all you would do is hear chewing gum and they're thinking 500 different meanings to gum all leading up to a point of conclusion if you lack that it's a waste of time to tell you anything this is why when you hear someone tell you that you cannot be told the truth this is why so they'll look at you and they'll have that look and those in the know understand that look it's a look that says you know so little you know absolutely nothing and don't know it to tell you what I know I would need 500 mouths and have to be able to speak 500 different sentences simultaneously all at the same time to express what I know and you would have to be able to interpret 500 simultaneous sentences flowing at you at once that's what that look says. And the look also says you don't even know that. And if I told you that, you would call me arrogant because you've been trained to call people arrogant. You don't even know what that means. So they'll just sit there and shake their head at you. They shake their head from side to side because they're paralyzed. It's the questions you ask the way that you ask the questions and what you do if they actually try to answer them how long does it take before you cut them off roll your eyes or get distracted by something that occurs in the room like a cat being distracted by bright and shiny objects and if they're trying to tell you something and maybe your cell phone will ring and you'll tell the person trying to give you truth to hang on Shelly has to talk about her boyfriend okay hey you're not going to get the truth. You're nowhere near prepared to even comprehend anything that is true. And then you say, come on, just tell me. You can't be told. Well, that doesn't make sense. All you have to do is tell me. You can't be told. Not in your current state. You need a lot of work. And you don't understand why you need a lot of work. That's what it comes down to. Now, nothing is 100%. Am I saying that every Freemason has been spoon-fed? No, there's a lot of intuitive people that probably joined that. But they were naive enough to be sucked in. But some of these people may want to tell the world things. Maybe they thought, you know, this isn't fair. i, I got to tell them what's going on. And they tried. Maybe they tried with a few people, but they got the rolling of the eyes. Or the person that they knew knew nothing.